In this video, I'm going to show you how to actually implement an, uh, a queue in C. It's actually incredibly simple. So to start off, we're going to create an array here that is going to represent our queue. So uh, we're going to initialize it globally, and I'm going to have it store, let's say, 256 uh, integers. But you can set it to whatever you want. Then we need also counts. So I'm going to have here a count, and it's going to be initialized to zero. Very important because we don't have anything in the queue in, at the start. Now it's important to note that this is not really a queue, it's just an array. But we're gonna create certain functions that work with this array as if it's a queue. So what are the two really important operations in a queue? Well, one is to insert elements and the other one is to remove elements from the queue. So first let's start with inserting elements, right? We have here a void insert, uh, let's say insert into Q, and we have an element X that we're going to get. <clears throat> and how do we actually insert into the queue? Well, we have to think about uh, the various states that this queue can have, right? If it's uh, if it's empty, of course, we're going to add it to Q of zero, so to the first index in here. We want really the first index available that is in the queue. Suppose that our uh, array looks like this, our queue that we somehow got to this state where we have three elements and we only have seven slots in this <laughs> diagram, but uh, that doesn't really matter. We have only three elements. That means that the count is three, right? So we know that count is actually three. Now, we need to find the slot where we need to insert this element. How do we actually find it? Well, we know that uh, at the index zero, there is nothing. Let me actually move this a little bit down so that we can type in indexes. So here we're gonna have index zero. We know that at index zero, we have uh, an element. We know that at index one, we also have an element. And we know that at index two, we also have an element. But at index three, we don't have an element. And in fact, we want to insert it at the index three. Now, it just so happens that our count is actually the same as uh, the index that we want to insert into. So what we can simply do on our program here is just say Q of count equals X, right? And then we add the element there, right? So our X is gonna be in here, and then we're gonna increment count, right? Because we have added another element so we're going to have to say count plus plus. And that's really all there is to inserting inside a uh, queue. And what we can do here is simply call insert into queue a couple times. So let's say we want to insert first one and then two and then three and then let's say five. Why not? And then uh, lastly, we're going to iterate over it and say int i. For i equals zero till however many we have, i plus plus, and I'm gonna say here uh, q of i, actually print f of percent d space q of i, like that. So we're gonna see like what elements we actually have in the queue after inserting all these elements. If I try to launch this, we are gonna see that we have one, two, three, and five in this specific order. And this is important because in the order that we are um, adding elements in this queue, that's the way they should be inside this array. And that is correct. We first added one, it's on the first index, we then added two, it's on the second index, and so on and so forth. That's amazing. Now we need to make sure we remove them properly from the queue. So we're going to have an operation here that's going to return an integer. We're going to say remove from queue. And this guy is a bit more tricky because, well, a queue is first in, first out, right? That means that the first element that has entered the queue should be the first one that gets up. So once we remove a, an element from the queue, we should get, in this case, one as a result, right? We should get one, so that means that we should basically just, let's say, result equals queue of zero, so the first effectively the first element in the queue, that's our result, but that's not enough, right? If I try to, for example, uh, simply get the result and just return res here, right? 
And now instead of iterating over this, I'm going to actually remove from Q, so remove from Q, and print out the result of remove from Q. And instead of having here count, I'm going to say four because we have four elements. Then you're going to see something very strange happen. If I try to launch this, you'll see that we only print one on the <laughs> on the screen. So why is that? Well, that's simply because our our queue has the elements one, two, three, and five, right? After we call remove, we do in fact get the first element here one. So we send that, we return that, but the queue is still the same. So the next time you come back and try to get an element from the queue, you're still gonna get one. So what we have to do instead is go from one, two, three, five to two, three, and five and have the actual indices change so that two no longer is the second element but is the first element in the queue. How do we actually do that? Well, to do so, we're gonna have to actually move every single element from this index to this index. So here we have the initial array, right? We have one, two, three, five. And here we're gonna have the array, the queue, once we have removed uh, one. So once we removed one, what we really want is this guy, these two here to move to this index, right? We want these two to be here instead now. This three to be here. And this five to be here, right? This is the order that we really want because then next time, if you try to remove an element, you're gonna actually find two here, right? That is the correct, uh, the correct setup for our array. So how do we do that actually? Well, there's actually a very simple way of doing it. If you notice, we are always assigning to an index lower than the one that we are actually getting the value from. What I'm saying by that is that we are setting the value of this index, which is zero, and we're taking the value from one, right? And we're always doing that. We're just setting the value of one, of the index one, and taking that value from index two. So it's always gonna be something like Q of whatever number, let's say I equals Q of I plus one, right? So the value at, if I is zero, then it's gonna be set to the value at I equals one, okay? And now all we have to do is really iterate over the array for every single i that has a number, so in this case, we have to iterate from where to where. Well, well, we have here to iterate, well, for i equals what? Well, we start at zero, definitely, because that's the first element that we set in the array. So we want q of zero to be set, which is this guy. So we're gonna have to say here i equals zero. But what's the actual condition? The condition, well, we know that we're gonna be setting three elements, but our count is actually four, right? We need to set two, three, and five. Um, since our count is actually four, we're gonna have to go from i up to count minus one, right? And then of course, i plus plus. And this is how you would be able to uh, remove the first element inside the queue and move all the elements to their proper position so that you can take more elements uh, later on. So to implement this, we simply go to our remove from queue function and we go to uh, here and create a i variable, let's say i equals zero, i less than, as I said, count minus one because, well, we have removed one element and then say i plus plus and we have to set q of i to the value of q of i plus one, whereas looking ahead uh, one uh, square. And lastly, of course, once we have taken an element from the queue, we should actually decrement count in this case. And finally, we have the remove from queue function properly working. If we try to launch this, we should see that we have one, two, three, and five in the proper order without any issues. And that's really all there is for implementing a queue in C. All you have these two functions that one simply 
adds at the end of the queue and the other one takes from the beginning of the queue and uh, that's really it. You don't even have to have these functions and just have them here so that to, uh, for you to understand properly uh, how these work. There are a few errors you could encounter actually with this uh, queue and one of them would be if you add too many elements in the queue. So we should actually check if our count is actually 256 because if it is, we have added way too many elements. We cannot add any more. So what we can do is just, I don't know, let's print f an, an uh, error saying no more space in the queue. And uh, we're gonna return out of the function. So we're not gonna do anything else. And then similarly in the remove from queue function, we should check if count is zero because if count is zero and we're trying to take something from the queue, there's nothing there. So uh, nothing can be taken from the queue. Therefore we should, let's say, print a message and I'll print it to the standard error output and say um, no elements to extract from queue. Backslash n. And also return out of the function. We've uh, now I'm not sure what error code you would say, but we can, for example, return negative one if we know that the queue only has positive numbers. Or you could simply exit out of the program altogether if something really wrong happens. But let's say we do negative one. So now if we accidentally add or take one extra element from the queue, then we should get that message printed on the screen and we actually get negative one here because we have actually taken that number uh, here and there is a way now to check whether or not we have elements in the queue. Preferably it's best to check the count but here for example I didn't do i less than count simply because this count is also decremented every time so if I were to use this when iterating it then uh, as you can see only two elements would be printed on the screen because every time we call remove from queue, this count decrements, right? And instead of being a four, it's gonna be a three, and then the second time it's gonna be a two, and then of course, this i is probably as well two, and it's gonna exit out of the for loop. The, the solution here is to actually get another uh, local count and save the value of count here and use this local count to iterate over the queue because this local count doesn't actually change and voila, you actually get all the elements. Now that's it for implementing the queue. I think it's pretty simple, self-explanatory. I went a bit into uh, details, but really bare bones. All you have to do is this to remove an element and this to add an element if you don't care about error uh, checking. I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Again, the source code for all this will be found on our website, a link in the description below. Take care. Bye.